Welcome to another episode of BC Spirits. I'm of course your host Sean Sewell. Um, this week is because it is dry January for me and a lot of people out there. I've decided to do a very specific week this week. Um, obviously last week I did the year in review for 2019 which I know is over exuberant uh, take on the BC Spirits movement in uh, thing, but I just am so passionate about this project and I have so many things planned for you guys, everybody watching, all the distilleries in the province this year, that um, I'm just always super excited. So, in the theme of Dry January, I want to explore a lot of the syrups and shrubs and everything that's out there in the market right now. Now, I know that I've got, uh, I've got what, eight in front of me today, and I could have gone really hard, like there's still mixes and elixirs, there is, um, oh geez, uh, Frostbite, which I really love, their Lime Cordial, um, there's a couple out there that I, I missed, and I do apologize. I, I will probably do another episode. Um, it's just about finding stuff on the island. Um, that was the big issue. And I reached out to a few people on Instagram to get a response. So something I will plan on better, but I wanted to do what I had. So um, really the focus today is sort of Rootside Cellars and Gillespie's Booze Witch line. I got a couple of their things, um, along with one one uh, kind of weird little one from uh, Scotty at Mad Labs. Um, I... I was sure I had his cranberry orange, but oh, I can put that lid back on properly. That's a mess. Um, but I only found his blueberry, so that's fine. But uh, let's kick it off. So uh, this is Wednesday. This is a Wednesday tasting, so that means that tomorrow you'll have the brand new BC Spirits podcast. It's dedicated, official, once a week podcast interviewing distillers and purveyors from around the the province, so tomorrow is actually the very first one, so it's Quinn Palmer from Rootside. So this is sort of serendipitous. I think this is meant to be. Um, so let's kick it off. Uh, Rootside does some great syrups. Uh, so their first one up, we're going to do the uh, rose hip and uh, lemonade. Rose hip lemonade, I actually had this yesterday when I was taping the uh, episode for this week. So I'm going to taste the syrup solo, and then I've got a little bit of like lightly sparkled water to sort of mix it up. Now, typically what you would do is you're going to add some syrup to your soda water and away you go. But, or we'll use it in a mocktail. I'm telling most of these things are going to go really well with the Lumet from Sheringham. I did that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they're non-alcoholic spirit, well, non-alcoholic distillate. Um, before anyone fucking messages me and say, you can't call it spirit, blah, 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 blah. Oh, just so good. But, that being said, these just don't need to be mixed with syrup. And I'm going to keep getting into this a little bit as we go. Because you can use them in cocktails. So for me, I would ch chuck the rose hip lemonade mix. I would do two ounces of gin, a half ounce of the syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, shake it, strain it. You've got yourself a rose hip sort of white lady sort of feel to it, uh, which is kind of cool. So the ginger beer mix, which is uh, fantastic as well. So it, you'll hear about it more in the podcast tomorrow, but uh, the reason why Quinn and Michaela started Rootside is they went to Vancouver, they were in Vancouver, which is where Rootside actually started before they came to the island here, and they got a really shitty Moscow mule. And so they were like, okay, screw it, let's make a ginger beer. Whoa. She's got some kick to her. Nice spice notes. Deep flavor. But I can see how this was made specifically for like Moscow mules and any sort of things like that. So for your Moscow mule, just a point of reference, I would shake this with the vodka and some and some fresh lime. Shake it, pour it over ice, then top it up and give you garnish with your lime juice. Just so you've got a nice mix and nice amalgamation or emulsification. Next up, um, their tonic water, their classic tonic water syrup. Now, if you're a gin tonic fan, I'm, I'm going to say the same thing, is that you want to shake it up with the gin. No ice, just shake it up with the gin, pour it into your glass so that it's all most well, so you don't get the syrup sitting at the bottom, the gin above that, and then water, and you go stir it, and then the bubbles go away and stuff like that. Ooh. This is, I think this is the very first time I've tasted this one in a really long time. Wow. Some serious, serious dry tonic notes in this one. This is great. Fantastic. And I know that uh, Quinn's got some plans for this one in the, in this year. So I can't say New Year because it's 2020. So uh, this year. So that's wow. But again, don't think tonic syrup should just be used for your tonic water. Like you can use it for a whole bunch of stuff like sub-add ingredients. 
um, and use it in like I, I would feel this one I gotta feel the same thing with the the cardamom so they've also got a cardamom citrus out Whew, that has got a hell of a fucking like quinine like tonic dry kick to it oh yeah again this one's great for me, all my brain is going towards is like a nice barrel aged gin, um, lime juice, um, maybe some orange in there, shaken straight up. Like, yes, use it for tonic water, but like, don't just let your mind go to one thing. Don't let it just go, eh, it's tonic water, so we're just going to use it for eh, tonic. Like, I, I feel like some a barrel aged, ooh, the Dutch courage from Divine, this, some lime juice. Some orange in there, maybe not so dry. Curious. Oh, Manitou, a little splash of Manitou in there from Legends. Give it a shake, strain it up. It's going to be on point. Okay, this one's the one I've been really excited about because I haven't seen this one. I haven't tasted this one before. It's their root beer syrup. I'm a huge fan of root beer, sarsaparilla. Um, growing up in Australia, we used to have sarsaparilla cordial, which, like, you go to Australia and the cordial aisle is literally cordial, like, two liter jugs of, like, syrup that you mix with water. Um, reason why I love root beer is that I really, 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 really love um, old fashions with root beer syrup, uh, cherry bitters, um, stirred strain old fashioned style. I just love that sort of, like, old school southern bourbon root beer cherry sort of feel to it. I just love that feeling. So I'm looking forward to this one a lot. And it does not disappoint at all. Dry, sarsaparilla, sassafras. Everything you want from your root beer. Really classic. Um, a really big one that's actually popular and I used to serve it at Clyde's back in the day. Uh, I used to make my own root beer syrup and make kegs of root beer that I would uh, ferment in house with champagne yeast um, to get a, like a natural carbonation is absinthe and root beer. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, try absinthe and root beer. So taboo absinthe uh, from Okanagan Spirits with root beer, shake it, top of soda, give it a stir. Trust me, you won't, you won't be disappointed. And with a little bit of water, oh, it's almost got this sort of like chocolatey coffee notes, but I know it's not, it's like chi uh, chicory, chicory is what I'm getting. But yeah, like try this, get some of this and try it in an old fashioned style with some cherry bitters and, and that sort of thing. So like um, the bitter sling cherry bitters, which I think I'm going to be tasting next week in the another non-alcoholic episode. But yeah, like an old fashioned, a root beer old fashioned, your money. Phew, there's so much flavor, like I think... Going into this, I wasn't expecting just the simple, the simple syrups to have such amazing depth and structure and length of flavor. I'm, I'm just really blown away and like just tasting the tonic syrups, my mind's just going cocktails, 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 which I don't usually do very much anymore. Like cocktail co like creation is not really something I'm doing a ton of lately. So my brain just goes click and away we go. So... Which are going to change it up now. Oh, I didn't put this lid on either. I was going to make a mess everywhere. So Booze Witch um, is a little side hustle from uh, um, Kelly from um, Gillespie's. And so uh, this is a tonic syrup. It's Rose Hibiscus. So it's a nice little segue from the root side. I always hate these little plasticky tops that always get stuck in the on the thing. So I'm just going to chuck that away. So this is a tonic syrup again. But... Think outside the box when it comes to just mixing it with soda water and gin. You get the tonic and the finish and the back palate, but the rose and hibiscus is like right up in the front. Oh, it dries out real quick. I was expecting it to be a bit sweeter because of the, the flavor of the fl flavor in the front palate, the rose and the hibiscus. Again, don't allow yourself just to be put into the box of a gin and tonic using a different tonic syrup. It doesn't that's not how it should work. So um, she's more notable for her shrubs. So this is one of her shrubs, the uh, strawberry black pepper shrub. Obviously, strawberries and black pepper go really well together. So a shrub is basically now I'm going to simplify it for everybody. So 
any hardcore bartender who wants to geek out and then like question how I describe this, knock yourself out. But it's basically a syrup and vinegar. So there's a high vinegar content. Um, used to be back in the day, uh, they would be created so that you could preserve like fruit for the, the season. So you go through your summer and your, your winter and everything. And so you'd have something for the winter. So you'd have these syrups to mix um, and use even though the season was over. Oh, you gotta love that. So the ingredients, strawberries, apple cider vinegar, sugar, black pepper, boom, boom, boom. Easy as pie. And you get that beautiful apple cider vinegar straight on the palate. Strawberries, strawberries, apple cider vinegar, sweetness, black pepper finish, and it's like a nice aromatic black pepper, like a freshly ground up black pepper. Beautiful. Um, for this one, uh, let's have a think. Okay, I'm going to say something along the lines like chuck it in a mojito variation. Chuck that in a mojito variation, that's going to change the game. Um, and it's a simple thing, subbing out sugar syrup or simple syrup for a shrub, bing, bang, boom. Next up, and finally, I was sure I had his uh, cranberry and orange because I've got a cocktail in the new BC Spirits cocktail book that I need this for. So uh, we're just doing the little Mad Lab. They sent me a little tiny bottle here of the blueberry kombucha. So um, it's a kombucha cordial. And I, from, I'm sure Scotty, if Scotty, if you're listening or watching this one, message me if I've screwed this up. I think they basically do a fortified, yeah, a fortified kombucha so they make a kombucha and then fortify. So it is 20%. So it is not a, a dry January sort of ingredient, but I think it sort of sits in that same sort of like category, if it will. So basically it's a kombucha liqueur. But I kind of felt like it sort of sat in with these guys because it sort of has the same flavor profiles, but you have to be careful it is 20%. Mm. Tastes like blueberry kombucha cordial. So yeah, like it is a, a blueberry uh, kombucha cordial in every sense of the word. So you can taste the blueberry kombucha and then just have that slight burn at the finish for the cock uh, for the alcohol content. So this is my dry January episode. Uh, I think I've got two maybe for this month. I think I'm going to do bitters next. Um, and I did root size and the booze, witch and the, the mad lab stuff, but really guys, like just cause tonic syrup doesn't mean you have to put in a gin and tonic. Um, go out and try it with something else. Like, honestly, I think the root size stuff with uh, barrel aged gin, Sublime and orange is going to just blow your mind. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We're kicking off 2020 really well. Uh, the BC Spirits cocktail book should be out, hopefully, fingers crossed, by April. Um, I've got a substantial amount of work to do in three months. Um, we are upping how many episodes a week we're doing. So, we're going to have the, uh, like, the tasting episodes on Wednesday, the podcast on Thursday... I'm doing, I'm meeting with some uh, videographers this week, so we're going to be doing tons of cocktail videos and distillery tours and stuff, so we're really uh, amping up BC Spirits this year. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you for your support for the 2019. Thank you for the support in 2020. I'm going to give it to you now, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.